Welcome to this week's edition of Taiwan Outlook. I'm your host, Chi Chen Lo. This July marks the 10th year anniversary of Hong Kong handover in 1997. And so 10 years has passed, and what have changed in Hong Kong? And this is the topic we want to talk about today. Joining us today is the Vice Chairperson of the Mainland Affairs Council, Dr. Tong Zheng Yuan. Dr. Tong, welcome to our program. Yeah, thank you, Professor Lo. It's my great pleasure to be here. Uh, from the official gov uh, government's perspective, how do you see the transition of Hong Kong since 1997? Well, I think the international community has paid a lot of attention to Hong Kong's development after 1997. And we really hope that Hong Kong's development can be very successful after 1997. Mm -hmm. However, according to our information uh, collected by our council, I think Hong Kong's experience has been kind of failure over the last decade. Mm -hmm. You know, from either economic perspective, or social development or political development. So we are, we speculate uh, China factor might be the very important variable mm -hmm. to hinder development in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So that is the situation in Hong Kong at this moment. Let's look at the political dimension of the situation in Hong Kong right now. You know, as we know that uh, Beijing has mm -hmm. promised that uh, the system will remain unchanged for 50 years. Do you see any progress at all in Hong Kong's political reform? Well, it, Actually, according to the basic law, the Beijing also promised that uh, if, if it eventually the chief executive and uh, all members of the Legislative Council mm -hmm. should be elected through uh, universal suffrage. Yeah. That is a promise made by Beijing. Mm -hmm. But after 1997, I think Hong Kong's people has made every effort to strive for uh, universal suffrage. Mm -hmm. But then the Chinese government always intervened to prevent this kind of universal sovereignty of election mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. You know, particularly uh, in 2004, the Chinese government used the Standing Committee of National People's Congress mm -hmm. to prevent uh, universal sovereignty in Hong Kong yeah. by so-called interpretation of the basic laws mm -hmm. to stop uh, this kind of decision in Hong Kong. Yeah. And then afterwards, Hong Kong's people has staged mis demonstration to to ask, you know, to request the Beijing government to allow universal suffrage in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But still, the Beijing government continue to intervene to stop this kind of uh, request from yeah. Hong Kong's people. Mm -hmm. According to opinion polls made by Hong Kong Chinese University, more than 70% of people in Hong Kong request that, you know, Hong Chinese government should grant this kind of right mm -hmm. of universal suffrage mm -hmm. by 2012 or even earlier. Mm -hmm. But still, the Beijing government did not respond at all yeah. to Hong Kong's people's request. And particularly, according to the polls, you know, uh, more than 80% of the young generation uh, at age between 19 to 28 mm -hmm. uh, request that universal suffrage uh, by 2012 or earlier. Yeah. But the Chinese government did not, still not respond to you know, these people's request, mm -hmm. aspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, these people will be the future call of the society in the next decade. Yeah. But then the Chinese government still not respond to their aspiration. Mm -hmm. I think this is a very serious situation in Hong Kong. But according to the public opinion service, uh, yes, uh, the, strong, the people in Hong Kong very strongly support the so-called uh, universal suffrage of the chief executive and the legislative council. But as you can see, that in year, in year uh, 2003, there are 500,000 people taken to the street. But now the number of demonstrators you know, are now decreasing. Yeah. How do you see the trend? Well, on July 1st, 2003, uh, there were around 500,000 mm -hmm. people you know, staging uh, demonstrations on the street mm -hmm. to protest that you know, Beijing government would like to impose the so-called uh, the legislation of the 23rd article of the yeah. basic laws. That, which article might prevent some human rights or damage some human rights and the freedom of speech in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So Hong Kong's people would like to preserve their, their freedom of speech and mm -hmm. freedom of the press, mm -hmm. and also would like to uh, preserve their political autonomy mm -hmm. by this kind of uh, demonstration. Then afterwards, in the very second year, in, on January 1st, 2004, again, more than 530,000 people in Hong Kong demonstrated mm -hmm. against Chinese government uh, by requesting uh, universal suffrage. But again, the Chinese government did not respond to Hong Kong's people's aspiration. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, I think the number has been gradually declined mm -hmm. over time because people think you know, Hong Kong is under the rule of the one China, two system, mm -hmm. uh, one country, two system. So probably they would be in vain mm -hmm. to request this kind of right. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You know, recently, uh, the chairperson of the National People's Congress, Wu Bang Guo, mm. just mentioned that you know any rights to Hong Kong is granted by Chinese government. Yeah. So the, this right of the political system belongs to the central government in Beijing, mm -hmm. and uh, the the power as much as many as power granted to Hong Kong is granted by Beijing. Mm -hmm. So the Hong Kong government and the Hong Kong people should not pursue or focus on politics mm -hmm. or political reform in Hong Kong. So I think Hong Kong's people feel very frustrated and even upset yeah. about this kind of situation. Even this year, there are more than, uh, I think, 68,000 people demonstration mm -hmm. in the street. Yeah. But still, the Chinese government, even the Chinese leader, Hu Jintao, you know, left Hong Kong early. in a very early morning mm -hmm. and without you know, not noticing this kind of demonstration in Hong Kong. So you don't see any possibility that there will be a universal suffrage in maybe 2012, 2020? Well, it, it will be very difficult to say because the Chinese government always say that you know, Hong Kong Hong Kong's uh, universal sovereignty should need a process. But in terms of economic affluence, you know, social openness and uh, cultural vitality mm -hmm. and even globalization, you know, Hong Kong is no less than any advanced countries in East Asia. Yeah. So if the Chinese government has the intention to implement democracy in Hong Kong, I think Hong Kong is more qualified to implement democracy in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And you know, some leaders in Beijing also advocate that so socialism and uh, democracy are not contradictory to each other. Yeah. And they even say, you know, so democracy is a long-term goal for China, and also democracy is not alien to the Chinese, government, Chinese system. Mm -hmm. So Hong Kong should be a very good lab laboratory mm -hmm. to implement democracy if the Chinese government would like to implement mm -hmm. you know, democracy in China in the long run. And this kind of situation will boost uh, confidence in, in China to implement democratization in the long run. But uh, unfortunately, the Chinese government still have a lot of concern about the so-called stability in China. Mm -hmm. So they would not allow Hong Kong's people to implement democracy in Hong Kong. This is so bad because Ch Hong Kong's people has no choice. Mm -hmm. You know, one country, two system is the destiny for Hong Kong's people without choice. Mm -hmm. So apparently we are not going to see any progress on the political ground especially on democratization in Hong Kong uh, in the foreseeable future. But let's look at the uh, uh, economic development in Hong Kong in the past decade also. And as we know that Hong Kong is a very uh, important uh, regional hub uh, in many ways as a financial mm -hmm. service center and so on in that, before 1997. How do you see the future prospect of Hong Kong's economic role in the region and in, in China's coastal area? Well, before 1997, Hong Kong was a very important regional hub, as you mentioned that. And also, Hong Kong is a very important center for financial service mm -hmm. in this region and also in globe. That's right. So people are quite concerned about whether Hong Kong can sustain uh, their economic growth and development right after 1997 hand mm -hmm. over to China. But then after 1997, according to our uh, data, I think Hong Kong's economy has been stagnated for a decade. Mm -hmm. You know, Hong Kong's government always cite a lot of statistics favoring one country, two system yeah. scheme. But however, if you look at the more details, you will see Hong Kong's economy is not so successful. Mm -hmm. You know, Hong Kong's government always said that, you know, Hong Kong's economy grew at 6.0% last year. Mm -hmm. And also, Hong Kong stock market has been a second largest burst after London to attract mm -hmm. so-called uh, initial public offerings. Mm -hmm. And also, Hong Kong has been a very important financial center in the world. So according to all these figures, and also Hong Kong has been a very, uh, they have achieved a very uh, low unemployment rate uh, over the last five years, mm -hmm. uh, reached to, I think, 4.8%. Yeah. So according to these figures, Hong Kong government show off that you know, one country system is quite successful yeah. in the past decade. But then if we look at the details of the so-called one country system experience in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, mm -hmm. we will see the experience is quite uh, failure. Let me mention some figures for you. You know, in, in 1997, Hong Kong's GDP per capita was around 27,000 mm -hmm. US dollars. Yeah. Then 10 years later, this figure only increased to 27,600 US dollars. Okay. That means within, within a decade, okay. their GDP per capita only increased by 600 US dollars. Mm -hmm. So this is not successful at all by any you know, standards. Mm -hmm. In addition, you know, Hong Kong's uh, 
income inequality also enlarging and become worse. And even Hong Kong's uh, figure cited by the Hong Kong government about the unemployment rate was still very uh, failure, according to you know the real figure. Uh, in 1996, the unemployment rate in Hong Kong was 2.2 percent, mm -hmm. but now their unemployment rate was 4.8 percent, yeah. as cited by Hong Kong's government. And this figure is the highest figure among mm -hmm. four dragons yeah. in Asia. Yeah. That is mean including Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and uh, South Korea. Mm -hmm. And also we can see that Hong Kong's average state starting average uh, salary mm -hmm. uh, for a uh, gradu college graduate mm. was around uh, 1,865 US dollars mm -hmm. in 1997. Mm -hmm. And it retrograded to 1,418 US dollars in 2005. Yeah. So you will see that if we look at per capita level, then Hong Kong's economy has stagnated and even re retrograded. Uh, Rachel Grist mm -hmm. for a decade. Yeah, but uh, that's the economic aspects. The one thing that people have paid attention to is the social uh, dimension mm -hmm. of the uh, Hong Kong development in the past decade also. For instance, rule of law has been one of the very important foundations for the economic you know, performance of Hong Kong. Freedom of press yeah. and social NG, uh, and civil societies and so on. How do you see the social developments in Hong Kong uh, for the past 10 years? When we discuss in the social development in Hong Kong, maybe we should also return to uh, the income inequality okay. and the social <laughs> justice a little bit about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in 1997, Hong Kong Gini coefficient, which mm -hmm. measured the income disparity in Hong Kong and mm -hmm. you know in every country, was around 0.518 in 1997. Mm -hmm. Why it increased further to 0.533 mm -hmm. in 2006, which is the most uh, which is the worst scenarios among Asian economy, mm -hmm. not only in China, not only in East Asia, but among Asian economies. Mm -hmm. In addition, if we look at the, me the medium income for household, mm -hmm. it also declined a little bit. You know, in 1997, the medium of the household income, average monthly income, was around 2,265 mm -hmm. US dollars. Mm -hmm while it declined to 2,214 mm -hmm. US dollars in 2006. Yeah. So you will see that the most of the wealth increased during the last mm -hmm. decade mm -hmm. has been concentrated yeah. on a small proportion of the population in Hong That's Kong. Right. So this also uh, you know, deteriorated the income, in, uh, income equalities in Hong Kong. And also this also created create a lot of uh, concern about the social justice. Mm -hmm. Now let's turn to the social development in Hong Kong. As you mentioned that, you know, uh, judicial independence and freedom of press or freedom of speech uh, are quite important concern for the international community because we believe these are inalienable uh, elements for supporting, you know, the sustainable economic development in Hong Kong. Yeah. But un unfortunately, this kind of social development has been a uh, very bad experience over the last 10 years. Let me begin with the judicial uh, independence. Mm -hmm. In 1999, where we should go back to the basic laws, yeah. the basic law says that the final uh, appeal should uh, stop at the, the court of the final appeals in Hong Kong That's right. instead of go to you know, China. Mm -hmm. But then in 1999, the court of final appeal made a decision that uh, China-born children of Hong Kong citizens yeah. should get you know, a board without review or approval by Chinese public security departments. Mm -hmm. But then afterwards, the Chinese government utilized the National People's Congress to mm -hmm. interpret yeah. the basic law by overriding the, the decision. Mm -hmm. So it is quite clear that you know, the so-called one country one country, two system mm -hmm. is under one country, mm -hmm. which one country is more important mm -hmm. than two systems. Yeah. The Chinese government always, particularly you know, this uh, July 1st, when Hu Jintao delivered a speech in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, mm -hmm. he emphasized that without one country, there will be no two systems. That's right. So two systems should be subjected to, to one, one country. Yeah. And according to this kind of scenario, it is quite clear. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, the Chinese government continued to interpret mm. the basic laws 
three times That's right. to undermine and damage mm. the judicial independence in Hong Kong mm. and the political autonomy in Hong Kong. Mm. When we come back, we'll talk about the media uh, freedom because that has been a very important uh, virtue of the so-called Hong Kong experience in the past. And mm. also, we'll talk about uh, what are the implications of the success or failure of a Hong Kong experience for Taiwan. Yeah. So stay with us. We'll be right back in a few moments.